Today, Don Shader, the grumpy old gringo, decided to throw in the towel. Don Shader has been, for a number of years, been a important YouTuber producing content explaining about becoming an expat, what you need to do specifically for living in Ecuador, which is a very popular uh, expat location for people coming from North America, and especially Americans, because Ecuador uses the U.S. dollar as its primary currency. So it's a very popular location. It has been for a long time. In recent years, Ecuador's lost some popularity due to some... Uh, turmoil within the country, but it still remains an important location. But I want to talk today about Don, and this is a, a sad commentary, I think, on the YouTube industry, and the more importantly, on the uh, expat and relocation industries, and that's really why I think it's worth mentioning. Now, uh, you know, we're hoping that Don decides to come back. I think he has a good channel and, and a good heart and a good reason for doing the stuff that he does, and his grumpy approach to it is probably good, because people need a bite of realism from now and then, right? You know, like, you know, you watch channels like mine, I tend to be just in general, like people who know me in real life, I tend to be a pretty upbeat guy. And so there a certain amount of that comes across in my channel. Uh, but it's not always easy to tell exactly uh, where the upbeat is coming from, right? So you need people who are a little bit more down to earth and realistic than me to to counter that somebody has really good content of the stuff that I've watched. And seeing him throw in the towel for the reasons that he did is very sad. So what he said in his video today, is that, uh, you know, he really has gotten so much negative from especially uh, people who work in the in the relocation space, people who are basically making money off of uh, gringos who are moving into Ecuador or looking to move into Ecuador. And because he's trying to provide a very realistic view, uh, which is not negative, right? He's chosen to move to Ecuador. He's chosen to stay in Ecuador, at least this far. So he doesn't have uh, in the in the meter of positive and negative. He's still leaning enough towards the positive that that is where he chose and where he continues to choose. But he's giving, you know, realism to what it's like to live there, which is certainly important. And he's got some negative things to say and some things are less than perfect, which is obvious, right? And we talk about it here on the channel. Like sometimes we talk about litter problems. Sometimes we talk about air quality problems. Sometimes we talk about, you know, shopping problems. And there, there are negatives, but we choose to live here. So you know that we're coming from a place of being on the positive side of the spectrum at the end of the day. And the same thing with Don. Now, maybe at some point he's going to move on from Ecuador and decide that the needle has gone too far to the unhappy, and that can happen. But I think he provides a good service. But it's worth noting just how much... And and this is, you know, coming from a place for me, because we recently had this conversation, I talked to a lot of people who are in this kind of same space, right? Uh, Eric from Generic Expat and uh, Ron from Nearshore Living and Elton from Immense Coffee and Jack from Jack Pittman. Um, all of us, right, are kind of in this uh, advisory space for relocation, whether we're just, you know, providing some very general advice or really d deep diving into different things, whether it's regional or national or, or municipal, whatever, we all have uh, our takes on it. But but we tend to talk quite a bit. And one of the things that does come up is there is a lot of external negativity. Now, those of us who are in a small market, honestly, we get very little of it. We're very fortunate here in Nicaragua that uh, there's just there's so little industry for people to make money. And we talk about it all the time, right? So we, we sense this negative. But the total size of the industry preying on expats is actually pretty small. And if you get out of certain regions of the country, you basically don't encounter it or you only encounter it if you go out looking for it. Day to day life, zero. Like it's not a thing. And while I have been threatened a few times from inside the country, super, super rare. And now we, here in Nicaragua, we have a different problem, right? We get berated heavily from agents from abroad who are trying to uh, push political agendas of other countries and we are seen as targets uh, because we exist here in country and so they're trying to convince us to leave convince us to turn you know and, and and just not be happy with the country or whatever we do get that kind of negative external pressure and it's super noticeable and we talk about it and we can identify patterns and we know exactly that where it's coming from why it's coming in and, and you know it's much easier to get over because it's not personal in any way they try to make it seem personal, but it's not. Uh, but for someone like Don, he's actually getting people, I think in many cases, that he knows personally in person. Um, and and they're very unhappy with him because he's not providing basically just marketing copy uh, for Ecuador, for their services or whatever. But there are people in Ecuador who are doing that, who are just providing this pure, everything's you know rosy and perfect and you need to come down and that they, Ecuador is the answer. And of course, 
I totally understand the irony because I have this super pro uh, Nicaragua channel, but the reality is, is I chose this after living in many places and I'm pro Nicaragua because I chose it intentionally. It's an amazing option. And I do talk about other places that I love and give you guys other options and help warn people that while it's a great place, it's not for everyone, right? But there are some people making some big money, especially in places like Ecuador, where you have so many expats coming in. And of course, you're gonna see the same thing in, in a Mexico, for example. Uh, it, but it, and, in, and in Costa Rica, of course, uh, where the, these industries are really large, but uh, so he's getting a lot of pushback and feels that if he if he isn't honest and, and doesn't give, you know, his real opinion on things that people sense that and they're unhappy with him for for good reason. Uh, but if he does do those things that then there's people who are preying on people who aren't doing their deep research or are attempting to do deep research and Don is who they find that they're unhappy with him. And so he's felt so much pressure that he's left YouTube over that. And I that's a really sad place to be. Um, and, and I really hope that he's able to find his way back and find a way to deal with that. And, um, you know, I don't know if he has, uh, really direct, uh, things, right? We've, we've all had threats. I think anyone who's got any, uh, amount of, of visibility on YouTube, you're going to start getting threats. I've had a few, some from here, some from the U S but it's, it's relatively minor. Um, but I think he is feeling a little bit more pressure. I just don't know what exactly, uh, has caused that, but it's unfortunate that that is the case. But we've seen a lot of this, right? So many channels exiting YouTube for different reasons. Um, we've mentioned a lot here in Nicaragua, but it's true everywhere that uh, a lot of long-term YouTubers who often have good value um, are, are disappearing from the market. And I know some people just burn out. Some people just get tired of it. Some people realize that doing this as a long-term thing and not getting enough positive feedback uh, is, is a problem. I'm really fortunate that the amount of positive feedback that I get is so overwhelming that like that's not an issue at all. My audience is the best, right? I'm sure he has a nice audience. I'm not disparaging his audience, but they're not as good as my audience. Like, let's be true. Let's be honest, right? You guys rock. Um, the live streams that we do, you guys are so cool and so much fun. Um, someone described it as like Thursday nights, the Thursday night live with you guys is like sitting around and having beers in the garage with the boys. Like, that's what it's like. We're all just, you know, we're joking about stuff and we're, we're asking real questions and having real conversations in this like family getting together and everyone's talking to each other and it's like this really cool thing and I know people from the live stream are getting together in real life and doing stuff uh, like here in Nicaragua like it's really cool um, people who own restaurants that we know nearby hopping on talking like it's cool it's really really neat uh, the community that we have and I'm sure other people pull off cool communities too that are almost as cool as mine maybe but this is the best one right let's let's it's just how it is and you know of course we're all finding each other because somehow Nicaragua hit your radar and Nicaragua is not everyone's cup of tea. It's a, you know, it's off the beaten path. It's a little bit more of a, I'm, I'm taking the time to do research. I'm willing to look more broadly. And so we get a different kind of audience. And I think that protects us a lot. And of course, much smaller market, right? So we don't have the, the, the most dangerous thing is the people who are expatting and just they just go where everyone else goes. Well, there's a sea of people moving towards Costa Rica, Ecuador. I'm just gonna kind of get swept along and they're the ones who are most likely to be unhappy, the ones who are most likely to feel stuck, feel trapped, feel like they made a bad decision, not know what to do next, not, not have the resources that they should have because they didn't do the planning, they didn't do the, the forethought. And so I, we're really protected, we're sheltered in that way from that. And someone mentioned that to me just the other day. It's so true, right? But um, it's sad to see Don going. I hope him uh, the best. Um, I'm going to reach out and try to see if we can get him to like maybe talk on this channel. I'd love to bring him into a conversation here, maybe on Latin American living and, uh, you know, maybe give him an outlet to continue giving some some input without having to be on his own channel where, where people can really get to him directly in that way. Uh, but uh, I mentioned this for a number of reasons, but I really think because we've talked a lot recently about these predatory uh, expat and relocation services that are out there, all the, and some of them are YouTube channels, some of them are you know companies that you can hire, but they're all all over the place, and of course a lot in the real estate space and the and the lawyers providing visas, and there's good people in these spaces too, but there's 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 dangers. And I think his story from someone that I feel is a very genuine YouTuber, he's very, you know, he's pretty big time. He's not a tiny YouTuber. He's not a huge YouTuber. Uh, he falls into that, a really healthy middle ground uh, where I think you have, you know, 
a reasonable number of subscribers enough where it, it encourages you to do it, um, but not so many that you start losing contact with people. It's still very personal, very, very much connected. And, uh, and he talks about like how there's so many YouTubers who won't even talk to him. They're too big. All they want to do is talk about, you know, they're only talk to brands and marketing stuff. It's only money. And, and they've lost sight of what they're doing. And they're just, it's just a business. And, and that's such an awful place to be. And I say that I love business. I'm a businessman. But I don't want relocation to be a business. I don't want YouTube. I mean, I kind of want YouTube to make money. That'd be cool. Not like in a business with you guys kind of way, right? Now advertisers want to be on here. Like that's, that's different, right? You want to, you want to advertise some, some alcohol, some, some flights, like that's cool. But, um, the, I don't want my interaction with my community, with the people who live in my GoPro box to be a business transaction. We're like, friends who don't get to get together in person that often, but we get to get together on your TV all the time. And in the live stream, we all get to chat, you know, like a lot. And, uh, uh, that's how it should be. Relocation is a very personal thing and a very important thing in someone's life, a huge thing in my life. And, uh, I certainly wouldn't want to have been at the mercy of someone who was willing to do whatever it took to lead me maybe not astray, but not in the best possible way in order to make money because they had to direct me in a way that would empty my wallet because that's how they made their income. And it's obvious from Don's experience that it mirrors in a much larger way, magnifies the experience that I've had that interacting with so many people who are in that space, whether it's realtors or uh, relocation businesses or whatever, that that's it really is kind of a cutthroat, merciless community who's willing to uh, make someone like Don, who seems like a really cool guy, who's just, you know, I, I can tell you, he doesn't have advertisers. His revenue stream has got to be way under $100 a month. He may be making as little as $20 a month off of his YouTube stuff, which is great that he's making something, but it's absolutely tiny numbers. And for for him to do that and have no revenue from it except for that and and be willing to put in that time and effort and make really good content and and deliver a real message and share his life with people for uh, over a period of years in a really valuable way um it's 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 so awful that the pressures from those people would take someone like him and make him feel like he couldn't do it anymore uh and and of course that's their goal Right. They don't want an uncontrolled voice out there just delivering information. They want everything to be controlled. We talk about this. We talked about it on the live stream uh, the other night where, you know, there's so many websites that are posting false real estate information, not because they think you're going to fall for the highest number. They want you to fall for the lowest number. They'd like you to fall for the highest number, but they're willing to have you fall for the lowest number because the lowest number is still two or three or ten times the real real estate value. So they give you ones that are absurdly high. So you lose your sense of reality and you start falling for the real scam is down here. That's the, you know, the trick is not getting you to spend $2 million on a $50,000 property. It's getting you to spend 500000 on a $50,000 property. You give the $2 million number, the $1 million number, the, the $750,000 number. Those are the lead you astray numbers. Ha, huh, I would never fall for something so high. Ooh, 500000 that sounds like such a deal. That's so much less than $2 million. $2 million is a fake number. That's not a deal, right? That's, it's easy to do that. They depend on those things, and people like Don are getting out there and exposing that, and people who find his channels will be very wary of those services that seem to cost a lot more than they should or take longer than they should or not provide the information in the way that why would you pay for something when you can get better stuff for free right so they're they're threatened by that and uh it's sad that a business that should be such a happy one right it's it's the whole vibe of like why are you relocating right to make your life better right like this is a happy thing and it's fun and it's not technical and it's not it's not really hard. It's just something that people don't do very often. So there's a lot of unknowns, but they're not hard knowns. They're just unknowns. And and uh, why is this not a happy thing? And it can be, right? So that's, I've been talking to a number of people about we're going to start putting together kind of a, a program, 100% free, just on the channel here. I mean, like a playlist where we kind of put in standard 
tools and, and tricks and processes and things to think about and decision factors for people becoming expats or new expats uh, so that you have a place to turn to and be like, oh, it's like a class and like a structured thing. And I'm going to go one thing after another and I've got a place to ask questions, but never for charge. Never, ever, ever. Like, I, I, you know, we, we thought about that at one point and I've discovered just how much it's an awful industry full of terrible people. And I know there's some good people out there. I'm just not finding them, right? Like, I mean, I have, like, but I, and I have a group of people that I talk to and we're all in this industry, but we're surrounded by a grisly underbelly of society. Um, and so often it's the people who became expats, they failed somewhere. And so they became expats and then they failed in expatting and they don't know how to make money. And so they're making money off of other expats, but not by helping them because they can't because they were failed they don't have that information they don't have those tools they're trying to make their money by extorting people or by tricking people or they're getting desperate and so uh because they don't have a value add they're not willing to give it away and they're they're not able to demonstrate the value so they have to get that money through other means and it's just a sad thing so we're going to combat that as best we can and you know some places like Don, we're going to do everything we can, which is basically nothing, but whatever support Don needs, you know, we're, we're here to discuss or give him an outlet or whatever. I've, I have reached out to him. We're going to see if he uh, responds. Um, but uh, I can tell you that those same pressures, you know, they happen to all of us. But uh, my reaction to that is definitely one of, well, if you're going to give us pressure about that, we're going to turn up the heat because obviously we're making a difference. So uh, we will do the best that we can to continue the work uh, in the spirit of what Don has been doing. Um, and and let's hope that he just decides to get back on that horse after a, a little hiatus and uh, and and take the high road and, and bring that information out again. But uh, it's uh, it's sometimes it's a rough business, um, but it's also it's an important one. So. Thanks for uh, thanks for t letting me talk for a little bit, and uh, enjoy your Friday night. See all of you guys tomorrow.